hundred percent by 2030. Fossil fuels are expensive and dirty. A hundred percent by 2030. Fossil fuels are expensive and dirty. A hundred percent by 2030. Fossil fuels are expensive and dirty. What's that? Fossil fuels are expensive and dirty. What's that? percent by 2030 fossil fuels expensive and dirty yeah Hi everyone, my name is Mal Skoron. Uh, I work for Green Energy Consumers, but more importantly, um, I, I really care about climate action. I'm a young person that decided to live and stay in Rhode Island after finishing my school here. Um, because I, I love the ocean state. I fell in love uh, with this state while I was um, getting my degree and I couldn't think about leaving when I knew that the state was in danger from the climate crisis. Um, Rhode Island has a lot of scary things ahead of it if we don't act. Um, but today, I'm feeling hopeful. When I see all of you taking time out of your day to come here and get together to demand what our state deserves, uh, it makes my heart swell, it really does. Um, I wanna talk about something that is close to my heart, something that I've been working on um, related to transportation. Um, Renewables are a huge part of the solution for Rhode Island. We absolutely cannot get to our goals by 2030. If we don't have 100% renewable uh, electricity. It's a win-win for the climate, for our health, for our economy, um, but it's a win for transportation too. Uh, transportation is currently the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in Rhode Island. And for a long time, we haven't really known what to do about the problem because as you can see, cars are ubiquitous. Uh, you absolutely cannot get around Rhode Island if you don't own a car. And those cars are the source of uh, climate warming gases and also health harming gases that make asthma worse, that can uh, cause respiratory distress, um, and a whole other host of bad health outcomes. And so what we really need to do is transition our system so that every Rhode Islander can get around this state with or without a car. We need a better bus system, one that relies on electric buses, and best part about it, that electricity, if we're successful, will come from 100% renewables. That will make the biggest chunk of our climate warming sources totally zero emissions. And we're on the pathway to doing it. There are electric buses on the roads today and we need a lot more of them if we're gonna reach our 2030 goal. We need more people taking the bus. We need to electrify every last car that's on the yeah. road. Woo. And we need to make it easier for folks to get around if they can't afford a car. I'm a young person and I can tell you it's expensive. <laughs> and I'm sure you all know that too. It can be really hard to be able to afford it if you're low or moderate income. And so, on top of this incredible 100% renewable electricity bill that the Senate is voting on today, on top of the incredible energy efficiency uh, uh, improvements that we're gonna see that's also being voted on today that Kai talked about, there's another uh, up and coming solution to our transportation problem. It's called the Transportation and Climate Initiative. Right now, it's stuck in the same way that this 100% renewable electricity bill is we can't get it um, past the house. And so in addition to demanding for 100% renewable electricity, we need to demand for TCI as well. This would uh, make it drastically easier for Rhode Islanders to be able to access electric cars, the bus, and the walking and cycling options that we need to make more available in the state. So, um, excited to see you all here and I hope this is the first of many where we can really get out and get people to show up for um, our climate, our health, and our economy. Thanks all. Thanks.